In this video, we won't be busting any nuts, only Stardew Valley Myths. 13 Stardew Valley Myths. Does luck matter? Is checking the TV every single day actually important? Well, kind of. Luck does matter, but not as much as you might expect. Luck affects the likelihood of finding a ladder in the mines and in the Skull Cavern. Luck also significantly affects the likelihood of finding treasure floors in the Skull Cavern and for getting treasure while fishing, but it does not impact the contents of the treasure. Fortunately, luck affects how many items you will lose when you die in the mines on the best possible luck day with luck buffs you will lose nothing which is very nice luck has absolutely no effect on power-ups in the journey of the prairie king i wish they did because this little game is not easy luck will not make enemies easier to defeat in the mines however it will slightly increase the likelihood of you landing a critical strike which farm cave do you pick? The fruit bat cave or the mushroom cave? Is this the most important decision you will need to make in this game? Does this selection matter? The fruit bat cave makes completing the community center easier. The mushroom cave gives you ingredients to easily craft life elixirs to keep you healthy in the mines. However, after the second year, neither of these matter anymore. It honestly doesn't matter which one you pick, as you will slowly stop using them and eventually you might only visit the cave once a month. However, just between me and you picking the mushroom cave is like going to a Victoria's Secret fashion show and leaving with a mannequin. More forageables will spawn after a rainy day. I wish this was true, but unfortunately this is not true in the slightest. Forageables will randomly spawn every single day and there is a cap of 6 forageables per area. It is important to note that all unharvested forageables will reset on Sunday, so if you are lazy like me, you could leave the foraging until Sunday and collect them all at once. But no, rain does not cause more forageables to spawn. And the same is true for artifacts. Desperately searching for artifacts spots off their rainy day will leave you disappointed. As you can see today is dry, it's as dry as a nun, but what if I said that you can control the weather in Stardew Valley? Yes, and no, I do not mean by using a rain totem. The weather is instead controlled by how many steps you have taken. This is something that 99% of players will never do, but there are mods that would allow you to see what the weather will be the next day based on how many steps you have taken today. This is even possible without mods once you have unlocked the casino you will find a machine that can show you how many steps you have taken. Myth, you are not subscribed to this channel. Actually, this is just true. 96% of you are not subscribed. Let's destroy this myth. I am going to be releasing videos for a very long time. Join me on our journey. The shipping bin will make you less money. I have no idea where this came from, but it is on Reddit. No, don't be silly. Selling items through the shipping bin will yield the exact same amount of money when compared to selling them to Pierre, Willie, and Clint. It does not matter. If it did matter, it would lead to some very interesting gameplay decisions, but it doesn't. So just be lazy and drop everything into the shipping bin. Coffee and spicy eel will make you run faster, much faster. Fortunately, they do not make you finish faster, but do they make you attack faster? I wish they would. Wouldn't that be absolutely amazing? Even though they increase speed and not specifically movement speed, they still have no effect on your weapons. The only way to increase your weapon speed is by using emerald rings and to enchant your weapons with emeralds at the forge. The same is true for the myth that speed buffs will increase the speed that your fishing bar can move. Spoiler, they won't, and to be honest, it might kinda suck if they did. Imagine if your fishing bar moved faster than it already does. It's already really easy to overshoot a fish and lose progress. This is a very old myth that many people still believe today. Keep a rabbit's foot in your inventory to increase your luck. Will bringing a rabbit's foot with you to the Star Wars Saloon help you get lucky? No. However, you can use a rabbit's foot to permanently increase your luck. After finding secret note number 20, you can bring a rabbit's foot to this van and this shady guy will give you a special charm that will permanently increase your luck by a tiny amount. However, the act of keeping one in your inventory does not do anything. Night events are random and very lucky. Well, not quite. Every single night event that can occur is already predetermined once you create your save file. If you use a Stardew Valley predictor website, you can see when each event might occur. There is a tiny bit of luck involved regarding certain events like the Stone Owl for example. This event will occur on schedule, but you will only get the Stone Owl if the game chooses a random tile and it happens to be empty. Otherwise, you could start up a file, check the events and then create another one until until you get a really good seed, like getting a crop fairy on the first day in your playthrough. The same is true for geodes, every single geode is predetermined and you can see all of them on the predictor website. 
you know that if you die in the mines that you will lose gold and even some precious items. It's a very punishing mechanic and reminds me of the time I left the toilet seat up. But why do you think the same is true for when you pass out at 2am? Many many people believe that if you pass out at 2am that you will lose tons of gold and items. But this is just not true. When you stay up past 2am you will lose a maximum of 1000 gold. That's it. Nothing more. Spend those extra hours getting even more iridium ore in the skull cavern. Every single minute counts. Take full advantage of those prismatic luck days. Processing truffle and truffle oil will make you less money. I have seen this all over the place and it is both true and false. If you have the botanist profession, your truffles will sell for 1,250 gold. Truffle oil will sell for 1,060 gold. So yes, processing your truffles will literally make you less money. However, the same is not true if you have the artisan profession. This will increase the value of your truffle oil to about 1,500 gold, thereby making you more money. It's up to you to decide if it's worth it. Giving gifts is important, why? Because the villagers have things we want, recipes, but do the quality of the gifts even matter? Should you save your lower quality things for gifts and sell the good stuff? No, the quality of your gift matters a lot. An iridium quality loved gift will yield 50% more friendship points. An iridium quality loved gift given to a villager on their birthday will gain you close to 4 entire hearts. Giving someone a regular gift is like getting a hug from your stepdad, it's just not the same. Regular quality gifts just cannot compare. Also, don't forget that while you can only give someone two gifts per week, their birthday does not count in that, thereby allowing you to give three gifts in that week. This is something small, but it can help you make friends quicker. Okay, so you find a certain character great, right? And you want to marry them, but they have dreams, they have goals. What happens when you marry them? Is it over? Do they sit around on the farm and sleep all day? Did you ruin your spouse's life? Well, not really. They do still go into town and spend time with the villagers, and you can see them continue to perform their hobbies on their own private little spot on your farm. There are only two crops that actually matter in this game, starfruit and ancient fruit. But that is just not true. Pineapples, it's great for date night. It's the fruit that just keeps on giving. Pineapples are kind of like a budget ancient fruit. They can reproduce after seven days. I can do it quicker, but still not bad. So when do you actually use these budget crops? In sheds, of course. That's right, with garden pots and deluxe returning soil, you can plant crops into a shed and they will never die. Pineapples are one of the best crops to use for this as it planting is tedious and I'm always ready for an easy way out. While it might be impossible to avoid your in-laws, you can avoid these 13 useless things in Stardew Valley. Thanks for watching but for now, I will see you in the next video.